Well, hello and welcome to this next discussion, this session on cultural streets. I'm talking about making a difference that counts. You should know this by now. There's so much more to life than just going to work, going to school, going to church, doing whatever, commuting, going and going out to play or to exercise. There's so much more to life than that. And that's what this is about. That's it's about finding your cultural street, knowing it and and learning how to thrive within it so that you're making a difference not just in the temporary world, but for eternity. Uh, my goal is to help equip you to, to be able to influence people, to disciple people, to shape culture by making Jesus known. Now, we have a mandate from God, and that mandate from God is that we're supposed to make a difference in this world. At the church I pastor, City Life, we call it making Jesus known. And that's because God himself, dwells in us. That's, that's the Holy Spirit. Wherever we go, God goes. And and whenever we are present and active and letting God work through us, then, then God is doing his work in this earth, but he does it through us. So, so I, I, my challenge is that you will see your uh, your vocation or your passion or your interests as a place where you are on mission. That's what I call your cultural street. And, and you're an ambassador, of Jesus Christ right where you are. Uh, you're like you're like a missionary there. That's why we we uh, want to do our best, study the the best we can, learn uh, to to do whatever job we do or whatever hobby we do or whatever whatever it is that we're doing to do it with a spirit of excellence. That's why you should grow your business and live a life that's going to that's going to be attractive not only to the world around you but but also to to the kingdom of God. Because God wants to work through you. God wants you to increase your sphere of relational influence because there's a whole lot more to life than earning a living or just making money or having an occasional vacation. So uh, I, I encourage you to be a person who changes culture, making difference one person at a time. All right, I'd like for you to find John chapter 14, verse 12 in your Bibles today, because this is a small passage of scripture we're going to take a look at as we continue talking about how we actually accomplish uh, the, uh, the task of making Jesus known in the culture. Now, there is this wrong belief. There's this wrong belief that's out there that says, I can't make a difference where I am. I need uh, an occupational ministry in order to do so, which means I have to work for a church or I have to work for a Christian organization. Therefore, I can make a difference there. But that's not true. It's not true that it's all up to pastors and missionaries and church leaders to make a difference. God has called all all of us to do that. And you, you are appointed by God for ministry. That's the great commission. And Jesus lived this out himself. Jesus was a carpenter from a small backyard, uh, backward town. And, and, uh, and he behaved in a way of, of excellence. He carried himself with excellence, but he also walked in his destiny and in his calling. And, and then eventually he left his carpentry business. He gathered 12 people around him that he began to disciple. And he modeled Christianity for them. He modeled how to live. He modeled how to make a difference. And Jesus commands us to do what he did. All right. In, in John chapter 14, verse 12, I want you to look at this because he, he not only did these amazing things while he was on earth, but he now tells us we have to do it. So John uh, 14, verse 12, we're going to go through verse 14. This is good. You, you should have this underlined in your Bible, highlighted everything. It says, he says, very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. That's a will do. You will do the works he's been doing. And you, he says, and they will do even greater works than these because I'm going to the Father. Let me explain that real quick here. Because Jesus was about to leave the earth, he was telling his disciples that, that uh, not only they would do these greater works, but anyone who believes in him will do these greater works, uh, the works he has been doing, plus even greater works because he's gone, which means when he leaves, then, then the Holy Spirit, which was empowering him, which was enabling him to do his ministry, 
That same exact Holy Spirit is given to anyone, anyone who wants the Spirit of God to operate in them, anyone who believes in Him, that Holy Spirit can come into you and, and can even fill you up so that you're able to do greater works, not just the works of Christ, but even greater works. So that's amazing. He goes on to say this. He says, and I will do. Okay, so there are things that we will do, but he says, I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. So there's a cooperative action that's going on here. God gives us his Holy Spirit to dwell in us. We are to do the works that Jesus did and even greater works and that we also call on Jesus through our prayer. So we ask God for things, <laughs> whatever it is that we're needing or whatever breakthrough we need or whatever doors we need open, we pray for it in Jesus name. And he said, and I'll do it. So there is this cooperation. Uh, we are just, we sometimes just really limit ourselves, but John 14, 12 through 14 helps us to open our eyes that we don't have to limit ourselves. We don't, because he is able to do literally anything and we will not only do what he did, but even greater works. And, and so he commissioned us to do these works. Now, uh, we've already looked at the Great Commission, but that's found in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. And so Jesus tells us to do it and, and, uh, and, so he tells us to do it. He empowers us to do it. He gives us the tools to do it. So really what we have to do is begin to look at how we're going to play this out, how we're going to live this out on our cultural street. So that's why I want you to discover where you have the most influence and then take those opportunities that come your way. Begin to pray to God for opportunities, for open doors, for ideas, and, and whatever you ask for in Jesus' name, he's going to do it. So he's going to begin to show you how you can live this out. For everyone, it's going to be just a little bit different. And, uh, and that's why, of course, you need to go online and do the Cultural Streets test at culturalstreets.com, and that will help you to find that cultural street where you have your best opportunity to, to influence and utilize your talents and, and utilize the presence of the Holy Spirit and that anointing that's on your life because you are called to be the hands and feet of Jesus on that cultural street. And again, it's not like uh, finding your personality profile, but it's, it's, it's about finding that, that unique place where God has placed you and then begin to understand it and then to begin to rise to the top and influence and, and then even influence other influencers, disciple people. And, and so it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful uh, strategy that God has given us to make a difference in this world. So the world wants to keep you isolated. The, the culture of the world says, well, you should just, if you're going to live for Christ, do it within uh, the faith community or within your family. So in other words, do it at home or do it in the church building, but don't do it anywhere else. Well, that's a big, big lie. And, and so many people have bought into that because the culture keeps telling us that. Well, we need to be a little bit countercultural, and we need to consider that there are, that, that faith and family are only two of the cultural streets. That's those are not the only places where God is supposed to be active and present. God is to, supposed to be active and present in five other cultural streets, and and that's where most of you are. Most of you are in those other five cultural streets. So that's arts and entertainment, business, education, government, health and vitality. And you're called to, that calling is a calling to rise in your business and, and get promotions and produce more art and gain more influence and, and create new inventions and thrive like never before. Step into government positions and walk into places that you might even feel uncomfortable, but you're going to walk in through the power of the Holy Spirit and you will have more potential than you even think you have. Now, the way to be trained for this is very simple. That's actually Sunday church. Uh, and in the way that I designed Sunday church, uh, the church I pastor is, is we're designed to do four things. I, my messages have four things that I encourage you in. And one is to educate you. 
So I want to educate you in the, in the things of God, the scriptures, the word of God. Second is to equip you. So e- equip you and give you the tools and give you the, the strategies so that you can make a difference in this world and to empower you. So it's not only just a, a, an encouragement to, to be empowered, but it's the empowerment that comes through the Holy Spirit. Because uh, ultimately, if we just do church and, and make it void of the Holy Spirit, that's nothing more than a club. It might be a nice thing, but it's not going to produce life change. So we want the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, and that's what Sunday Church is about. And then the the fourth element is to release you. In fact, at the end of all of our services, we have a, a statement of blessing, which uh, which has been around for about five thousand years. Moses is the one that that began launching this when he was in the desert, in the wilderness with the children of Israel. But it's a blessing to step out into the culture and to make a difference and to shine brightly for Jesus. So it's equip, uh, educate, equip, empower, and release. That's what Sunday Church is about. So that you are able to flourish on your cultural streets. Going to church is not just about becoming a better person and being a happier person. Yeah, those things are that's that's that happens, but really it's about being uh, equipped and and empowered and educated and released onto your cultural street. And that's my passion. That's my heart. That's my desire because the best ministry actually happens outside of the church building. I want to give you an example of someone who is thriving on a particular cultural street, which is the business cultural street. And this person is a friend of mine. His name is Bruce Binkley. And he, he, uh, he is a business owner, a small business owner, <clears throat> and he also has a corporation uh, called New Name Society. New Name Society, and New Name Society is is all about ministry. In fact, his his small business not only meets his needs and 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 provides for all the people who are working for him and for his company, but it also provides for incredible missions. Uh, uh, outreaches that that he is a part of and that he has initiated both locally and around the world. Let me tell you a little bit about this because I know personally because I've been right in the middle of of what he has done. But he he started a business. It's called it's a it's a it's a franchise business called Express Employment Professionals, and it's it's uh, in Waxahachie, Texas. And he he started this business several years ago along with his wife Camilla Binkley, and and they together have run this business. But the business was not just to create money. The business was to create a a, a mechanism to get the gospel out. So, so he's in the marketplace doing ministry. He sees the marketplace as ministry, and I, and that's what we all have to do. So, as this business began to rise and flourish, he he made some uh, decisions right up front that that all anytime you get anytime new uh, new clients came on board, anytime they would receive a, a first payment from a new client, that 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 would be a first fruit offering that would go to his local church, and that they would tithe off of what came in, and. Uh, <clears throat> And they continue to grow this, and not only uh, by just doing small things around the area, such as as helping with local food pantries, but the business began to grow and expand uh, internationally. One of the big projects that that Bruce and Camilla have have done is is they've they've uh, they've reached out to the children of Zimbabwe. There's horrible, horrible, horrible uh, poverty that's there, and 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 people just simply need blankets to stay warm. It used to be a wealthy country, but it, it was overtaken by a bad government system, and 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 now it is is horribly impoverished. And and one of the things that he does through his company is he funds this the simple giving of of blankets, hundreds and hundreds and thousands of blankets to children to keep them warm. A simple thing, but uh, but another thing he he began doing is is uh, working in Vietnam and over in Vietnam uh, was able to get into Vietnam and and do ministry there to children, but also found a way to be able to provide heart surgeries for people. Uh, a very simple heart surgery here in the United States, but it's it's something that's definitely needed over there. People are dying because they can't get these surgeries. It's a communist country, and and they're not able to get these 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 life saving surgeries. 
So, uh, so what he's done is he's been able to go into that country, even though it's communist, and and to provide these heart surgeries for hurting people, so that they're is they're literally saving physical lives. And does this ministry continue to grow? One of the things that they discovered is in Cambodia, uh, because they would take these trips over there regularly and checking out what's going on, discovered that in, 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 in some of the villages that, that girls at a certain age would just become, come up missing from the community. And, and it was pretty well known that these girls were being, uh, <clears throat> these girls were being kidnapped and put into sex trafficking. So it's, it's a terrible thing. So what, is, what can you do to stop that? Well, what he did is he opened two homes. One's called Marlene's home. The other is called Vera's home. And and uh, and in these homes, girls are able to come together. The most at-risk girls are able to, to get their education and to be protected and to be safe and to be well-fed and so that they are kept out of the sex trafficking industry. And and there, they, the, these girls are beginning to flourish. And so he funds all of that through his small business. Uh, personally, I, I know that 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 even the church I pastor, City Life Church, that that if that they were huge, huge supporters of City Life Church in order to get this church on on its feet and became this the largest single donors in the history of the church. They don't do that for accolade or praise, but it's because they'll they'll do this out of the ministry that's in their heart, and they use their small business as the launching pad for all types of ministry. These are just simple ideas that came along. Their, they, their lives would intersect with a person or a situation or, or something that they said, we can be part of a solution. The sky is the limit. The sky is the limit. You see, when you have the Spirit of God in you, God is going to lead you and guide you and show you things you've never seen and known before. And I just want to show you a picture of Bruce, Camilla, and, and a group of children from, uh, from overseas. It's just beautiful to see this these people. Just, just look at these wonderful, wonderful people who are here. And these people are these children are all being touched by the ministry of Bruce and Camilla. In fact, one of the things that you can do is if you go to Facebook, if you go over to Facebook, you can look up uh, an organization called New Name Society. New Name Society. And you'll actually begin to see the work that they do. And they do all of this because they are small business owners who decided to take their business and instead of just... Uh, instead of just living it up and enjoying their their income and their profits no what they've done is 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 they are taking care of ministry needs all around the world the sky is the limit what is god calling you to do check out that again check it out go to go to facebook new name society and look it up and just begin to see what they are doing it's an amazing amazing work and the reason i show you that is Get, they don't want attention. They, they don't necessarily care that, that everybody loves what they're doing, but it is an example of what can be done when a person says, I understand my cultural street. In this case, it's business. I understand my cultural street and I'm going to use my business. I'm going to use my business dealings to make a difference in the world. And anyone can do whatever God puts on your heart to do. And God will uniquely design your path ahead if you'll just really listen to him. That's what he wants. So I encourage you just to continue to flourish, to, to understand and to pray and to ask God exactly what you're supposed to be doing. And, and, uh, and begin to influence people around you. Influence your neighbors. Begin to influence the people that you regularly cross paths with, because that's the definition of your neighbor. And uh, and so here, here are five things, five things I'm going to encourage you to do based on today. Now, I've already talked about this. Number one is discover your cultural street. And number two is commit to influencing and shaping culture. And number three is to begin discipling be just begin discipling someone. Number four is expect, it's an expectation that you're going to do greater works than Jesus. And and even and of course the works Jesus did. And the fifth thing is this is to pray for miracles on your cultural street. Pray in the name of Jesus that miracles will happen and just watch how it unfolds. Well, I want to pray with you. Uh, again, but before I pray though, don't forget to go to the Cultural Streets website, culturalstreets.com. Take the test, 
learn who you are, who God wired you to be, and and how uh, what that cultural street is that you are are uh, are possessing, and then begin to become present and active, and use some of the tools that are there to grow in your understanding and and to be released into that cultural street. All right, let me pray for you. God, I just pray for every person who's listening to this today. I pray for your encouragement and your strength and your comfort. I pray that you will give uh, just supernatural. Um, wisdom and insight and and visions and dreams of what can really be done through each person on in their unique cultural street, whether it's developing ministry, or discipling individuals, or, or 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 just launching an attitude in the in their their sphere their sphere of influence on that cultural street of influencing other influencers to shape and to change culture. God, just give us insight give us the, the 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 reminder constantly that all we have to do is to pray in the name of jesus and miracles will happen and i thank you for it in jesus name amen god bless you